Welcome to WTF 2020, How to Pivot in the COVID-19 Shit Show. I'm your host on the Total Picture Podcast, Peter Clayton. You know who's gone bonkers since COVID-19 besides the usual suspects like Amazon and Instacart? Slack. Think about it. What if you could run your entire HR organization on Slack with no bulky software or candidate tracking systems? In today's remote work world, where Slack is king, that's the vision my guest today, Kevin Corliss, CEO of Roots, has in mind. So, Kevin, welcome. Uh, tell us a little bit about Roots and what you are up to. Yeah, so no, thanks for having me, Peter. So, Roots is a suite of uh, lightweight employee-friendly HR tools. It's designed to meet employees where they prefer to be, where they work. So as you mentioned, in Slack and in chat, the benefit to building HR tools that are chat-based is you really lower the adoption risk uh, for those tools. The engagement generally increases. Um, so people will generally see more value from those products. Um, it can really streamline your common HR processes. And then the end result of more engagement is you have more data to work with. You have a better pulse on your team and you can keep things, everything in line, especially in a COVID environment where it's where it's hard to measure your team and keep a pulse on things. According to the press release that I got, your your company was formerly called Tree Hopper. Where the yeah. hell did that come from? <laughs> yeah, so that's a, so the, the entire, the seedling for the company was actually out of a, a capstone like college project for me. Um, and the core problem that we were initially trying to solve was all around time off. So uh, it was really just a reflection of people not taking enough time off in the country. And, you know, why, what, why was that? You know, a lot of it stems from work, the culture you create around it. But when we were originally founding the company, it was, it was sort of geared towards how can we people help people take more time off, fully utilize their time off and get quality time off. Uh, and Treehopper had this really sort of around the bout, you know, analogy for that, that so <laughs> tree, tree hoppers are these insects. They exist uh -huh. on every continent around the world. Uh, they come in all shapes and sizes, all colors, and they have at their core, this innate ability to jump great distances, but they don't do it unless they feel endangered. So that was sort of what we were trying to position ourselves on is saying employees have this innate ability to travel, to go great distances, to take time off, but they don't use it unless they're, you know, downtrodden, hazed by day-to-day -day life. We wanted to create an environment where people were ready to jump uh, whenever they wanted to. <laughs> so tree offer, it's, uh, it's a bit antiquated at this point for where the company's at, but it was, uh -huh. it's, it's fun to think about those roots and where we started from. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and of course we are in a completely different lifetime now than, uh, than the tree hopper analogy because people yeah. ain't hopping no trees right now. No, and, and it evolved. The company evolved pretty quickly. Um, after that original thought, we started recognizing that the real challenge with taking time off was not, you know, are you saving or you don't know where to go? It, it's more the culture around the company. You know, how do you, how do you communicate with your team? How do you manage it? How do you make sure there's visibility into who's in and who's out? How do you hand off your tasks and responsibilities before you go away so you feel like you can actually unplug while you're gone? We started quickly recognizing that the real pain point was um, around management of time off and not, not some of the other issues that we originally thought they were. Uh huh. So um, give me an update now. Who, who are some of your clients and what are some of the challenges that you're helping them solve? Yeah. So uh, some of our clients, uh, some of the flagship clients are you know, GitLab. TopTal, um, Adapar, Miro, a lot of uh, unicorn, a lot of a lot of tech-based companies. To be honest, right. I think the problems that we're helping them solve are sort of exactly what you alluded to at the beginning. It's um, a lot of these companies are remote, they're distributed, they're fast-paced, uh, and they really just want to streamline these processes and um, put them in an employee-friendly sort of shell that people will actually engage with. You know, like you said, those HR systems that are antiquated. Um, even even today's HR tools that are a little bit more robust and advanced, they're still point solutions. There are these separate logins, there are these separate platforms that employees don't log into, they don't absorb the information. Um, so there's a desire for all these companies to take their common HR processes, consolidate them, and put them in a more streamlined fashion in Slack. You hit a, a real pain point 
in HR that I have been aware of. I, I've been covering this space for a little over 15 years. And, you know, what one of the problems that HR people always bring up to me is, look, we've got all of these different platforms. The, the reason recruiters use Excel to manage their caseload is because they don't want to have to spend an hour every day logging into all of these different systems that don't talk to one another, right? Yeah. And it's just, that- it's just tremendously burdensome for them. And additionally, then all of the back office reporting that they have to do it and log in into these systems takes away the time from from what they're actually trying to accomplish yeah absolutely and and i i mean so you mentioned recruiters but i mean it's applicable to to every employee right like um the expectation is that if you're taking time off you log it the performance management you know is housed in a different platform referrals and recruiting are housed in a different platform um and for somebody who's an engineer or a marketer, a salesperson who's high stress every day doing those, like there's no incentive for an employee to actually figure out those systems and log in and and try to understand what's different about this platform than the other one and the other one. Um, So it becomes really cumbersome for employees to actually interact with those systems, which are really critical. Tell us a little bit more about Roots at this point. Um, I I understand you just got a B round. Is that correct? Uh, So Kind of an undefined round. It was led by uh, our customers, though, largely. So, really? uh, yeah. that's a good that's a good sign. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 for sure. I think we're we're really excited um, about the the customers investing. I think now that they have an equity stake in the company as well, you know, we we're setting ourselves up for the long term. You know, we we want to build apps that are sort of um, looking at our companies and our customers' current use cases and what they're dealing with. So. I think it's a it's a beneficial partnership all around. So in in your estimation, is Slack at this point just a launching point for you? Or, or are you planning on building apps that are going to be outside of the use of the Slack platform? Yeah. So we actually we have we have three apps right now. They're all Slack okay. based. Uh, there's a central platform that allows sort of the facilitation of user management for all three of those apps from one place. Um, and then reporting and data feeding back into that platform as well. But all the apps are built in Slack. The employee touch points are all in Slack. So the first app is time off. Um, like I said before, it's not just tracking time off, but sort of the hygiene around time off, um, making sure there's good visibility, good handoffs. You know, when somebody logs time off in Slack, syncing that with calendars, syncing it with your HRIS, um, helping you hand off tasks and responsibilities before you go away giving you updates on what happened when you return. Um, We have a referrals app, so streamlining the candidate referrals experience and helping recruiters to automate the curation of referrals at scale. Mm -hmm. And then our third app is uh, around social connectivity and uh, measuring how much cross-functional exposure employees have across the organization based on their Slack channel structure. So we have three apps that kind of touch on different parts of the employee experience. Mm plan by the end of the year is to build uh, about two more apps um, touching on different areas of HR. And then uh, as we move forward, absolutely Slack is just a jumping off point. Their their client base kind of aligns with our client base and our target demographic. They're also extremely developer friendly. So that's kind of why we started there. But uh, we have aspirations to move into Microsoft Teams. A framework we've built can easily be replicated across different chat mediums. Uh So uh, you know, we'll keep a pulse on what's relevant, what chat systems people are using, and we'll definitely try to grow into those areas. So are you addressing 1099 uh, freelance folks who are working with companies, which obviously with a lot of the high tech companies, there are a lot of freelancers who are involved who are not FTEs. Are you speaking specifically to the the time off portion? Well, to any any part of the HR puzzle that you are trying to solve. Yeah. So, um, I, in other words, can, can a 1099, uh, you know, freelancer be part of a Slack conversation that's happening over zoom? Yeah. So, so I think, uh, I think anybody who's in your Slack workspace can be onboarded into the roots platform extremely easily. 
So if they are a part of your core organization in that sense, they're utilizing Slack, um, they're part of that ecosystem, then they can benefit from those apps. The benefit to our platform as well is that you can decide which users are um, authorized for different apps. So mm -hmm. I could say, you know, I want all my FTEs, I want my all my employees in the U.S. location to be authorized for time off. I want all of my employees, all the people in Roots to be uh, authorized for the referrals app. I only want my marketing department to be authorized for the silo measurement app. So in that sense, you can definitely um, sort of gate the features, gate the apps. If you don't want 1099 employees to access those things, or they shouldn't be a part of those processes, they don't have to. But if you do, and it's going to be beneficial, very easy to add. Well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'd mentioned earlier, my friend, John Sumzer um, with HR Examiner. And uh, on a recent podcast, he, he was talking about the problems using Microsoft Teams for 1099s people because they aren't authorized to be part of, um, you know, an employee database. And, and a lot of this has to do with, of course, with the fact that you know, companies who are using a lot of 1099 employees don't want to run the risk of having them classified as W-2s. Um, and to, to do that, they sort of have a separate bucket of this is where all of our freelancers <laughs> live over here. And, you know, there is a RPO who is actually their employer and they come in. But because of that, and, and this has become, uh, you know, because everybody now is working virtually and and are living on Microsoft Teams and Slack and and all of these other applications that are trying to get people to be able to collaborate together, um, it's a real problem for the teams that have a lot of 1099 people involved because they can't connect to the Microsoft Teams um, archi architecture. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's really interesting. I, I, I mean, I think uh, it's hard for me to comment on Teams just because we hadn't, we hadn't um, gone into that system as much as Slack so far. Uh, but I think it's really interesting because I, I think Slack's emphasis is on, you know, they have features for just multi-channel guests, single-channel right. guests where you can restrict access. Um, and I've never looked at Slack as an employee database especially with how they're approaching things in terms of sharing channels across organizations, sharing channels across right. workspaces. Um, you can really sort of classify people how you want and, you know, give them access to what they need access to. Um, so in that sense, Slack is a great place to, to have 1099s and contractors. You know, we have contractors who, who work on our platform as well. And they only have access to you know one channel that's that's specific to them, mm -hmm. um, and but because they're a part of our Slack workspace, if we want them to access the different apps within Roots um, and use those, they can. Um, so I think it's a really interesting distinction. I, I mean, I don't want to step too much on sort of the legal and compliance space of can you have 1099 employees in an employee database? What classifies as an employee database? But right. um, I know Slack does a pretty good job of of restricting that access and helping you add those additional add those layers. Yeah, it it really seems that it it is much more transparent and simple with with Slack than with something like Microsoft Teams and of course, you know, when you get into the to the discussion of who's an employee, every state has a different definition of what an employee is. So, it it really gets complicated, you know, and especially if you are, uh, you know, an enterprise-sized corporation running Microsoft Teams. Um, you are really, you know, the, the compliance piece of this becomes very critical to how you're operating on all of these different platforms. Again, now that everyone is is remote, and you know, one of the things, Kevin, that I find really interesting about this is, for years, companies have been saying. Uh, we can't work remote. We have to come into an office. We have, you know, we have our teams and we have our conference meetings and, and, and people have to be there. Uh, otherwise, it's just not going to work. And now all of a sudden, guess what? Everyone seems to be doing just fine working remote. Not only are they doing just fine, the companies are saving money 
and they're finding their employees are more productive. Yeah, it's a, it's a shock. <laughs> yeah, employees are responsible. Shock. Wow. Yeah. You hired yeah. responsible adults. Yeah. I, I can't believe it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, it's it's crazy. I mean, so we we've, we've always been very like bullish on remote work and and knowing that that's a part of the future. I think obviously COVID's ex- accelerated the timeline by probably a decade, five to ten years. Um, but yeah, I think you're absolutely right on that. But it, it, on that. it's inevitable. I mean, I, I think a lot of companies were really interested in in trying remote work, but then. You didn't have a reason to shake things up. You didn't have a reason to build that infrastructure. That's right. Um, or there were a lot of people who were adamantly against it. Uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, I, I'm trying to think of some of the companies. I, I feel like uh, maybe TripAdvisor was one of them. I've heard a lot of companies who have like changed course on their opinions of re- remote work who were adamantly against it. And then, you know, all this sort of shed some light on it can work. But um, I've always, I think we've always thought it's been inevitable. And I think, just as you said, people are realizing that it's it's not only possible; it's it's actually probably the the best setup for most organizations um, if they're if they're able to do that work from afar. So, tell us a little bit about your your roadmap going forward. You had mentioned that before the end of the year, you you're planning on releasing a couple of more apps uh, along with the Slack Slack platform. So, can you uh, give us some insight onto what these are going to accomplish? Yeah, so we're working very closely with our customers about, you know, what they need most. There's a couple areas that we're really interested in. Um, you know, onboarding is an interesting thing. There's uh, performance management, but not in the traditional sense of, you know, 360 reviews and OKRs, but more real-time feedback. How can you get a gauge on how you're doing week to week? How can you keep a pulse on your employees, their mood, their performance, um, more in real time and complement a uh, a performance management. And then we're also interested in um, internal skill transfer, how you can help with sort of upskilling and creating connections within an organization. Uh, so if I want to learn, you know, Django or Python as an engineer to progress my own career, how to facilitate those connections with someone in the organization who does know those things. So we're trying to make, create this really robust picture that touches different parts of the employee experience, things that we consider these core pillars within the employee experience. You have time off, the ability to unplug, you have referrals and sort of this community pride and uh, our company pride. And um, we have social connectivity. So measuring social connections and community, Uh, you start thinking about performance and adding that layer as well as upskilling and career development. So I think there's different areas of HR that we can absolutely replicate what we've done so far. And the benefit to doing that is the way we're creating these apps, they are extremely high touch. They are extremely engaging. We have adoption rates in the high 90% for most of our applications. Um, So you're getting a ton of different data and not only, uh, not only data that you would traditionally have. So one thing I like to say, you know, with our time off app in particular, traditionally you track time off in an HRS, you can just see how much time off an employee has taken. With our app, you can see how much the employee has taken. You can also see how active they were on Slack when they were supposed to be on vacation. So were they unplugging or were they actually staying plugged in and messaging people and and not getting quality time off? So there are all these additional data points that we're creating by merging these processes with high-touch systems. In long term, we can end up being this really cool data hub um, for admins, for HR teams to see a picture of how healthy and engaged their employees are at any given time. That's really cool. And, and I'll, I'll tell you something, it, it, when you were explaining this, it, it reminded me back like in, in the bad old days of 2008, 2009, during the Great Recession, a lot of employees would refuse to like do anything but be glued to their desk because they were terrified of getting laid off, right? And so, you, you, you know, there, there would be like these wonderful, uh, you know, one day offsite meetings that they could go to if they chose and they wouldn't go because they felt like if they were out of the office and no one noticed that they were missing, then, then, then they would get laid off. So I, I think, you know, in, in the midst of this pandemic, where people are really, and, you know, rightly so concerned about their livelihoods, their, their jobs, keeping employed, uh, they become even more obsessed and and 
uh, unwilling to unplug, if you will. Yeah, and I think the way we're designing our apps, we're providing companies a vehicle, like I said before, to meet employees where they are, to create more of a culture of caring and understanding and connecting with your employees. Um, so using the Time Off app, for example, again, you know, a lot of our clients created types during COVID uh, for, and when I say types, out of office types. So mm -hmm. going beyond traditional PTO, they created types like uh, stepping away from the screen or homeschooling the kids or family time. These one-off events where you're out of office and technically unavailable for one to two hours. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure there's good hygiene, there's good communication around that event. Um, but by giving the uh, companies this tool, the ability to do this, they now have a way to outwardly say to their employees, we value you taking time off for these different reasons. It's not just a vacation to a beach. It's not just extended medical leave. You know, if, if a company wants to embed that as part of their culture, they can say, we value you unplugging for these reasons as well. So, um, you know, that's just one example of kind of the time off app, but we're designing these tools in a way that can help the companies to connect at a deeper level with their employees. You know, I, th I think you're, focus on, on onboarding is, is right on because that's one of the biggest challenges companies are having now, especially with entry-level employees, you know, somebody right out of college for their first actual job, you know, full-time job, um, coming into an organization without having the physical ability to onboard within a company to understand the culture of the company and all, you know, just the nuances that happen. So if you can create uh, an app that really helps guide employees as they are, are onboarding into the organization, I think that'll be a huge benefit to um, your customers. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I mean, there are so many different areas of HR that we can, we can tackle, but I, I think that the benefit, to what we're doing is it's sort of plug and play HR, right? We built this framework where you have, you know, one central platform from an admin perspective, but then you have all these individual, you know, apps and Slack based chat based apps that you can deploy as you see fit. So if you do need help with onboarding, great. If you need help with time off, great referrals, social connectivity, um, you can choose which ones are relevant to you. And I, I do think you're right. Like the onboarding experience in particular, extremely relevant right now and, and mm -hmm. granted lots of lots of products try to do it there are lots of things out there but um that's that's kind of what we're trying to do is just a more lightweight employee version employee friendly version of what's out there um and then you can choose what's right for you yeah and i really like your emphasis on lightweight because that you know especially to to people in hr now whose lives are, have been flipped upside down all of a sudden you know they're, they're ordering PPE and, and worrying about safety, which is something HR hasn't worried about in 50 years, you know, since uh, people left the factory and started working in offices. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, uh, I, I think the emphasis on lightweight is incredibly important. Um, you know, I, I personally know a lot of HR tools out there that define success as you know, 20 to 30% adoption across the board, right? And that people are paying lots of money for these systems only for them to go unutilized. I know. Um, that's not what you want from an HR. You know, you want to deploy something that you know people are going to use. Uh, so that's the benefit to Slack. That's the benefit to doing this in chat. You're in their workflows. You're not disruptive. Uh, and, and I think that lightweight piece is even more important in a remote environment uh, to make sure you're actually getting data that you need and, and data flowing through your processes and through your systems. Yeah, well, as you, I'm sure you're aware of over the last five years, a lot of the HRIS systems have been, you know, uh, acquiring a, a lot of companies and integrating them within their platforms, uh, trying to make them work within, within their platforms. And I've had several clients who have been bought and integrated within the death star of the huge HRIS system and you, and you never see them again. They, they, they just disappear. It's yeah. the most remarkable thing. You know, these companies are paying millions of dollars for these things. And then where yeah. did they go? You know? Yeah. And, and so I, 
a lot of HRIS, they're trying to innovate, but it, it, it's just, it's incredibly hard. So, I, I mean, you actually have some HRIS systems who are building Slack bots and sort of Slack um, inputs into their system. But the problem is like their their core pitch is still the same. It is, we are a data input system uh, right. that's not really adding value to the people who are engaging with it. So even if you build a Slack interface on top of that, that's still your core message. That's still your core pitch. It's input your data and we'll track you. Like right. there's no value to that for the employee. So I think for us, we're taking a very methodical approach of how can we take this standard common process and transform it in a way that's actually engaging for employees, that's actually adding value, adding uh, incentivizing and sort of adding value to their day to day day to life. So they'll engage with it. Right. Um, and I think that that's why it's kind of it's working so far. Yeah, it sounds like it. And, and you know, again, back to the HRIS stuff, a lot of these are are what are called the systems of record, right? And so right. that's what they really focus on because now they have all the compliance issues and that's always top of mind to them. Yeah, and always. so we're, we're, I mean, we're not naive. We know those systems are necessary. So right. all of our products are designed to complement the systems you already have in place. They do integrate with HRIS. You know, our, our time off app integrates with HRIS. It, ha it has its own API. Our referrals app integrates with ATS. We know we're not going to be replacing these systems uh, in the near term. So I think, honestly, what we're doing is building a better Slack version <laughs> of what they're building and then uh -huh. feeding them the data that they're trying to get. Um, but yeah, I, I think uh, HRIS will continue to play an interesting role. We're not replacing them at this time. Right. We're optimizing the processes and making the processes that you normally do in your HRIS a bit better. So that way your data and your engagement in those processes is, is higher. Cool. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for taking time to speak with me today here on Total Picture. It's, uh, it's been great to meet you and, and uh, what you're doing is very cool. And um, I really applaud uh, your efforts in this space to make life easier for the HR practitioners out there. Uh, how can our viewers and listeners connect with you? Yeah, so uh, honestly, I, I'm very open and transparent. You can reach me directly if anybody's interested. It's Kevin at tryroots, T-R-Y-R-O-O-T-S dot I-O. Um, you can check out our website, tryroots dot I-O. Uh, but I'm always happy to chat. Somebody can reach me directly or you're more than welcome to go through our site as well. But uh, Peter, it's been really fun. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you very much. So hey, it's Peter Clayton. Please hang on for just a minute. Like most of you, my business was completely upended by COVID-19. Instead of filming marketing, sales, testimonial, and product demo videos at conferences and corporate offices, I'm living on Zoom. Zoom can be an effective video tool for many kinds of powerful content. As people have become more comfortable being on camera and upgrading their video streaming capabilities, we are now able to create high-quality, entertaining, and informative videos using the Zoom platform. Virtual meetings, customer testimonials, product demos, marketing pitches. You'll be amazed at the video quality and the amount of sophistication and graphic complexity we're able to create. For a free consultation on how you can use video to market and promote your business, send me an email, peter at totalpicture.com. And check out totalpicture.com forward slash work. I look forward to hearing from you. And thanks for tuning in.